Good evening and welcome to our title round for tonight. Uh, in the ring we have two very fierce competitors. Absolutely, absolutely, and we're, we're very excited for this matchup. This matchup has been a long time coming, and I think they're all ready, and there's the bell! Oh, 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 oh wow, a very strong start, a very strong start. Oh, we've got one of them bouncing off of the ropes and then coming in for a good close line. Oh, and she's down, oh, no, and she's just a little kicky up thing. That's, oh, 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 wow, a chunk slam off the top rope. I didn't even know that was possible. A uh, DDT! Oh my god, amazing! DDT and... Uh, oh, they're, they're on the floor, they're on the mat, they're on the mat! Oh, 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 she's really working that leg now! Oh my goodness, can can she even get out of this, out of this hold? I don't know if that's possible. Sure. Oh, oh, and the ref's, the ref's the moving ref, in. The ref's looking for a tap, the ref's oh, looking for a tap. Oh, she's kicked out, she managed to kick oh, out the last minute. Out. Oh my goodness, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. This is the most amazing thing you've ever this seen. Is, this is incredible, this is amazing. I don't know how this could end. However it does, I am here to see it. Oh my goodness, and they're going in for a rear naked choke. I, this is, this is, inc oh my goodness. The fact they have not talked out yet, tapped uh, out yet, is, is incredible. It's incredible strength. It's incredible strength, but I think, yep, one. Okay, the referee's ch checking the arm thing again. I don't even know what that does, but I'm guessing. Oh, the arm's down again. And there's the third time. And there goes the bell. This has been amazing. This has been absolutely amazing. Agnes will be paying the bill. Agnes will be paying the bill. That's who's playing for Team Cake today. Join us again next week in this tiny cafe in Bedminton. Greetings, strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnet Dale. And I'm not Jane Eris Magnet Dale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast. We're two queer trans ladies. We're, 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 we're married types. We talk yeah. about the things what we've done in the week, usually the media we have consumed and yeah. such. How are you doing on this day? I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah, I still haven't quite got the, the thing of having quite enough breath to do the... The really heavy, like, uh, intro. Yeah. Um, and, like, yeah, energy, energy, energy at the beginning of the show. Woo! <laughs> well, see, that's that's one of those learned skills. Like when you're learning to run a marathon, you don't get all of your energy out in the first couple of minutes of the podcast. You, you, you know, we're not racing to the end of the podcast as quick as we can. Oh, it's, a, it's a marathon podcast. It's yeah. not a sprint podcast. Look, if you, do a, if you sprint a podcast, you're going to be exhausted and have no energy two minutes in. You, you need to conserve your energy for, like, you know, the last minute goofs. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. I gotcha. So, what have you played this week? I mean, mostly Pokemon. Pokemon! Continuing to be lots of Pokemon. Ooh. Um, I've been, I've been doing more shiny hunting in Brilliant Dome and Shining Pearl. Um... Couple, couple, of, couple of new things. Uh, first of all, when I'm streaming in, when I'm, I'm doing shiny hunting in the office now, I have a little overlay that's a trapezoid, um, that overlines. Um, so when you're shiny hunting, doing radar chaining and brilliant diamond shining pearl, in order to get the best odds, you're trying to catch Pokemon in a chain, but you're also trying to go four spaces uh, away from where you start. Yeah. Um, I've got this little overlay so I can see at a glance which spaces are four apart. The reason it's not a square is there's perspective, perspective shift oh, yeah. because it's isometric um uh, so i have a well-sized um little little I, I might have to pull it up i think i have ooh. it visible that's <gasps> that's my trapezoid ooh. um that overlay so i can add an instant like see oh that's that's where i should be going now i want to talk about weird shiny luck because when you do shiny hunting as much as i do um, you realise that, like, statistics are bullshit, and just because one thing is much more likely than another thing doesn't mean the unlikely thing won't happen, and or that the likely thing will. I've been trying to shiny hunt for a uh, Pokemon called uh, Chingling. Uh, I have one shiny of it, I need another for its evolutionary line, mm. and in theory... I should have about a 1 in 20 chance of being able to get a chain of 40 chinglings in a row to get my good shiny odds. Mm. I have been trying for well over a week and have not successfully done so. Now, on the other hand, like that that's like that's like 1 in 20. That's like getting a crit on a d20. That's not that hard. Yeah. It hasn't happened. You know what has happened twice in the time since I've been trying to do that? Mm. Two different full odds random shiny encounters what? one in 4096 odds sh 
most people never randomly encounter one ever in their time. I've stumbled into two of them. I found a shiny Bidoof today. I spent like five hours on stream trying to get that what should have been a very attainable like chain of, of chinglings going. It wasn't happening. Random shiny Bidoof, sure, wander in. Oh. Um, which, I mean, I, st I know that the... <laughs> Getting the bad rolls out the way doesn't make the good rolls more likely, or vice versa, and you don't have to do the big number of rolls to get the unlikely thing. Uh -huh. But it's very... It's not until those two things happen back to back very quickly that you notice, like, oh yeah, statistics is... You can see how people fall into the sunk cost fallacy, given, like... The rare thing is happening more likely than the much more common thing, and statistics are weird and don't make sense. Well, you know what they say at Unseen University, right? Exactly. Meaning to one chance has happened nine times out of ten. Honestly, right now, it, it happened. That is, that is what is occurring. I can do any, any shiny hunt I've tried has been pretty successful, other than this damn jingling that's just like, nah. 93% chance of the chain continuing? We're gonna break on stage one of the chain, stage two of the chain. I can't... Today I couldn't get a chain for, like, multiple hours of more than, like, two jinglings in a row before just like, nah, we're done. No. That's very... The odds were doing weird things today. Ooh. Um, but, while I'm talking about shiny hunting, shiny. um, I have new... I have a new shiny friend in the house. Um, I have a friend for, for my little cuddly shiny ditto. Yeah. I have a very big shiny ditto. You have the largest ditto. I have been doing some googling and I'm pretty sure I have the largest plush shiny ditto in the world. Well, I feel like you should end up in, in some kind of record book for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I didn't do anything. Our lovely, lovely partner Phoenix made a big beanbag chair. Made of, you a sitto. A sitto, a shiny ditto that you can sit on and it's full of many, many beanbags. It's even shinier now because I accidentally gloss it, got glitter on it, so now it's a glitter as well. <laughs> oh, no. A sitto glitter. It's... The pictures I've been posting online don't do justice for how big it is. No. Um, I can lie in it like a hammock. Yes. With one of Ditto's hands being, like, the pillow and my legs being up on the other arm. Uh, it takes up a two-seater sofa by itself. Yep. It's a big friend. He's a large friend. It is a large friend. I, I had it in the background on stream today, and people thought it was much smaller than it was <laughs> until I stood up and walked to the back of the room and gave it a hug and they were like, oh that's huge! I thought it was I thought it was much closer and much smaller. I'm like, no. no. Every now and then it was just a fun little trick to be like, oh yeah, that did her back there. Let me just but 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 Oh my god <laughs> It's so huge. Yeah. It is. It is. It's it it someone pointed out that like apparently it seems like in order to date me anyone that joins joins the polycool and starts dating me at some point inevitably has to has to make a shiny ditto that has become a thing now i see <laughs> shiny like... dittos for the blue goddess exactly <laughs> yeah. uh but yes i've been shiny hunting and it's been going well except for that one blooming chingling don't want to don't want to be shiny hunted it has the shiniest uh, shyest knees yeah because like it, it's it's a rare spawn in the first place, so I'm having to take a while to find one to start the chain, which wouldn't uh -huh. be so bad if like ah, it took me like half an hour to find one. But like you know, the the, the chain statistically should go pretty alright. Oh, it fell on the first one. I, the bad luck has just been lining up in exactly the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What have you been playing? Oh, I uh, played some Wall True Learn because it was free on Epic Store. This was the visual coding teaching thing. Yeah, I. It's supposed to teach you about machine learning. I I don't know if it does that or not. I mean, it teaches you sort of um, uh, connected process code coding, like the yes. the logic of how you do process to process to process around. Yeah, I guess I guess it does that. And I suppose you could say that it also works for understanding things like reusable modules. Yes. So, like, say you've made a thing for... Um, this thing will test the colour of something. Mm. It will test whether it's uh, red or green. Yes. Or red or blue. Or blue mm. or green. Yeah. And you can use that. So any Anything that isn't one of those two will be filtered into the other two options, and then you can use a second one to filter out yes. the third colour from that. That was quite a cool thing to do. Yeah. 
Um, yes, interesting, interesting thing so far, and I've quite enjoyed it. Yeah, and it had some amusing narrative from what I saw. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it was was did I stumble in on the one good bit of writing? I really enjoyed that bit about the cats. The, yes, that definitely weren't cats. Yes. They were definitely a person. Yes, definitely a human that would like to drive a car. Yeah, right. Um, there was. There's a bit where you have to basically try and get Amazon, like, become their their book, uh, their order processing. Okay. Thing. Uh, there's one where you are requested to do a job for a uh, a a government, which want to monitor their citizens. Mm. It's like, hmm, this is deeply concerning. Yeah. Yeah. So there was that. Maybe the narrative will at some point be critical. No. Doesn't no. seem like it. This uh, is like, haha, this is a thing that programming is done for. I mean, that is a thing that programming is used for. Mm-hmm. Um, It's alright. I got to a puzzle that I just couldn't work out how to do. The fact that I couldn't manage to get the startup for, for uh, Amazon to actually work. Uh, like, I couldn't make their company make money. I had bajillions of customers, yeah. and I couldn't find a logical way to, with the tools I was allowed to use to make that process work. And there was no, like, uh, hint system or anything that was going to be like, hey, have you considered thinking about it this way? Or oh, really? It's just you're stuck. Eh, tough yeah, luck. I looked it up online, and there was lots of people saying, I can't make it work with the, the numbers it's giving me. Mm. Like, I can have like up to a couple of thousand uh, customers and I can definitely look after those but anything more than that and the whole thing just collapses mm. um, which would be great if it was a deliberate critique on the instability of capitalism I doubt it's that it's not it, <laughs> because it literally goes from being like there's a couple of people oh there's 24,000 people per day that want to use this thing you can may- seemingly maybe get 20 you know uh, 2,000 or so to, to run Mm. And consequently, because you can't serve all the customers, it goes out of business reasonably quickly, uh, while costing you a fortune. Yeah. Yay! What about you? Uh, I've been doing more repetitive gaming. I've been doing more Binding of Isaac Repentance. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been making some proper good progress on getting back into playing that, and that's been going well. Um, I've moved from normal mode up to hard mode, Mm -hmm. and I'm doing all right. Um, I've started reliably defeating some of the later bosses from uh, the last one, which I think was Afterbirth, so I've been, like, making it past mum, mum's heart, it lives, and then going, like, the devil route or the the angel route, and there's at least a third route I haven't done yet. And then I'm sort of going to be ready to start tackling the new, like, repentance-specific levels and bosses. Um, I have been really enjoying some of the new items. Um... I've been playing around a bit more with some of the stuff I never used to use very much, like the uh, mm-hmm. the dice rooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still have to Google what each one does when it happens, but like one of them I've started using, if I find it, is like um, it'll re-roll all of the power ups and pickups and collectibles on the room. So if you go to like the ah, here's my level and my item for this floor. I don't like it. I remember there was a dice room. I'll go back and check it, see if it's the number that re-rolls that. Go find a better thing. Mm. Um, I've been working out some ways to sort of scam the health system in interesting ways to get more mm. health. Um, I things like Tell us dis- your pro strats. Well, <laughs> not pro strats, but <laughs> just discovering things I didn't know previously. Like um, I like playing as Azazel, who has flying and short range brimstone to start but doesn't start with any permanent hearts Mm -hmm. if you find a room with a bed in it that will heal you up to full health and you have no permanent hearts it will give you one permanent heart for free um because it can't heal your temp hearts uh so that's kind of that like that's kind of nice um i've been deliberately holding on to certain i've been finding a lot of like really neat new modifiers for brimstone brimstone it's very powerful, but very short range, and there's a lot of really nice new modifiers that make it more viable. Mm. Um, one of my favourite ones is Chain Lightning, which, as long as, like, you don't even have to hit the thing with your broomstone, because if you miss it by a little bit, the lightning will then arc to the enemy and then arc around the room with its much better range. And I'm like, aha, 
You've basically given me infinite range on this. Huzzah. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'm continuing to really enjoy that and little little couple of hour bursts here and there. <laughs> what about you? I played some Blasphemous. Oh, I know that one. The sort yeah. of uh, religious-y, architecture-y looking... Um, Side scrolly, yeah. Pe- people with the big, tall, with the uh, tall, pointy screw hats, yes, full of blood. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know that thing. One, it, it's one of those games that feels a little like, eh, this seems like a dead cellsy kind of. It feels like it wants to be like a, a late eighties, early nineties action platformer that is just nails hard, but with just a few aspects for more modern stuff. Like, I don't need passwords. Yeah, <laughs> but not much. Not much more than that that you'll get. Lots of power ups, lots of um, lots of ways to improve yourself in various ways. Lots of mm. uh, things to do, like a whole currency and leveling up system. Yeah, it's interesting, but it is not easy. No, it is not. I was doing surprisingly well at the parrying though, which is unusual for me because usually parrying yeah. is just my. It- it, no. it has a nice forgiving window on the parry, and it seems mm. to be like, hey, we want to encourage you to use it, so we're gonna make it. Usable. Like, nice and usable. Like, mm-hmm. because, like, it, it clearly wants you to be parrying pretty reliably. Yeah. It's your ma- it's one of your main forms of, I don't want to take damage right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a de- yeah. neat little game. Yeah. What else have you played? What else have I played? I need to pull up my list of what I've played. Um, we played some boarded games. We did play some boarded games. We played some more Gloomhaven Jewels of the Lion. Yeah. Um, which continues to be real fun. Plot, 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 plot. Plot, uh, plot, plot is definitely occurring. We had our first, here are two choices of mission. Which mm. one would you like? Yeah. Um, I'm lagging behind on levels some a little bit now in you've, Gloomhaven. You've, ever, you've what, five? I'm points? five experience away from leveling up, and you've, you've been adding new cards to your deck, and I'm just here like... Uh, yeah, but you'll be doing it next time and we won't. Yeah, well, I, I've got one extra perk, so my attack deck's a little better, but I'm exactly. like... Exactly. Um, I had a level where there were no obstacles to destroy, and the main thing I get experience for is destroy an obstacle and then get a buff and some experience. Mm-hmm. And there were, like, two obstacles in the entire level on the last one we did. I was like, oh, no, none of the things I need for experience. Yeah, I've been... I did, Like, there's been a few where I've just... Because I'm mostly a support character, I've really been struggling a lot with a lot with the, like, the personal missions. Yeah. Where you get, like, a tick at the end of it working towards a perk. Mm. But I think there's been, like, at least once where you, you and uh, our, our teammate have been uh, getting extra perks before me. I, so far, I think I'm the only one out of our trio who has always completed their mission. Yeah. Like, I I am at least a couple of missions ahead of you on the perk track on both of you. Mm. Like, I, I've completed my second set of tick boxes. So, like, my, my attack deck is getting really nice. I'm just a little behind on, like, I'm going to be a little squishier for one Squish. mission. Ah, but I'll get there with hmm. me and my little tiny deck. I'm really enjoying how it it changes and how you as you level up you can improve your um modifier yeah. deck and yeah. the way that that sort of makes things different like I feel like my modifier deck's like really nice and clean at the moment because yeah. I've you know worked through to a point where I've got rid of a lot m- like most of the negative stuff has gone out of there now so yeah. Like, even though I'm not primarily an attacker, like the modifier stuff is, like I don't think there's that there's one minus one and one miss in there, and that's all of the negative yeah, stuff in there. That's how my deck currently is, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've already started going like, okay, well let's start turning some of my like neutral zeros into more interesting cards. Yeah, um, yeah I'm I'm really digging it. Mm-hmm. I I'm really enjoying the pace at which it lets you build your character and sort of customise them towards a certain kind of build over time slowly so that each time you add a little something to your deck you can play a couple of hours of the game and go, okay, what was working, what was not, what do I want to tweak? Mm. Like, it's not throwing upgrades at you too quick for you to process what your options are. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah, it's... it's I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm feeling like so much more... Um understanding of the systems in it now partly because i've been playing the digital edition of the main game uh partly through like more experience just playing this 
thing, things are certainly running a lot smoother. Like turn for turn, we're generally doing way better. Yeah, we've we've got a better idea of what our synergies are and mm. how we make our character do the things it's good at. Yeah. Um, it's been really nice as well. Um, we we were talking about this. Neither of us was sold on the idea of a board game dungeon crawler, no. but like, there's a bunch of things we were talking about at the weekend that really help that ga- that game's pacing mm. from being able to move and do an attack in the same turn, which means mm. that like you're not just having turns of productivity, like you know, utility or cool shit. You're probably doing both. Mm. The smaller size of the arena sort of force and the deck size forcing the game to be very condensed and not have a lot of downtime between cool mm-hmm. shit like it's it's a really nicely paced it is really nicely paced and yeah. it is uh, everything i could have wanted from this type of game that i was initially very reticent to get anywhere it, near. it is none of the things i feared it would be knowing it was a dungeon crawler i read a thing today that described it as being like more of a euro style dungeon crawler game as opposed to mm. like ameritrash and I agree, because it yeah. uh, does... The fact that it doesn't have dice rolling, the most randomness you really have comes from any of the modifier decks, and there's so much you can do to mitigate those as you go on anyway, Yeah, that it never feels too bad. <laughs> my phone made a sound while I was trying to get my notes up. <laughs> that it never feels too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, really enjoying it, really looking forward it... to more, looking forward to Frosthaven when yeah. that finally arrives. I, I think my last lingering thought about it is it feels like a dungeon crawler that isn't just trying to crawl up um what's D D man's name? Gary Gygax, is it? Ugh. Doesn't feel like it's trying to crawl up Gary Gygax's arse and be what what's that like famously incredibly difficult uh, kick- Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. It it doesn't feel like it's trying to go, hey, I heard of Tomb of Annihilation in D D, let's that. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to, like, fuck you over, like, when we had a choice to make. Yeah. We made a choice, we got a different thing, and consequences happened. Not gonna say what those were. It doesn't seem like either choice was gonna go, oh, you fucking idiot, why the fuck did you do that? Yeah. Unlike um, the city card we had, which was, like, something, like, some big monster crawls out of the river, what are you gonna do? There seems to be someone dealing with it. Are you going to attack the monster while the other person's dealing with it? Or are you going to try and hold the crowd back? And we were like, you know, we made a decision. And it was clearly what the game thought was the right decision. Because we got more experience out of it. So that was nice. Yeah. But like, neither would, I suppose, technically have been wrong. Yeah. We'd have got different things for either one and... You still got something. Yeah, it's not as unforgiving as I feared. No. Uh, what about you? What else have you played? What else have I played? Goodness, uh, I played some. T- I played a game of terraforming Mars. I think possibly oh, yeah. my highest scoring game so far. Yeah, it sounds like it went well. Yeah, it went really well. Uh, I got a hundred points. My opponent got Yay. eighty-two. Um, we. It was really nice. You finally using those um double layer player boards that I got a little oh, while ago. Yeah. Those are so good. They like they make, really make that game feel a lot less. Oh my god! If I tap the table or do anything, this whole thing's fucked. Yes. Um, how well do you, a lot less? How well do I remember my exact board layout in case I fuck this up? Yeah. And you know, just the it gives you more freedom to just be like, hey, I'm just gonna get on and do the thing. I feel confident in doing that, and it was fun. Hmm. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time, and we played with the Prelude expansion as well. Mm. So at the beginning of the game, you get four um, four cards in from the Prelude to go with your business. So you've got your your basic business that will tell you what your starting stats are. Or we, well, sorry, we didn't play basic corporations. We played the normal ones. Yeah. But yeah, played those, and then select four things from the um, Prelude deck. And they will give you like a little bonus, a little specialty yeah, for your, your little, for your faction. Your little story of what happened down on Earth for you. What what did you load up into the 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 <laughs> rocket before you were blasted off towards Mars? <laughs> um, I got uh, an eccentric billionaire. Who, okay. Who um was basically going to fund something for twenty five uh, million Ooh. or twenty five mega credits? I think yeah. it was in that game. So basically, I got this huge project way at the beginning of the game for free, uh, or for like one mega credit, I think, mm. which got me like 
just a little I was, I was like this is brilliant I've got loads of extra income it's going to be really really good and then my opponent was just like oh yeah I'm starting on 16 income I was like fucking what <laughs> okay took me a while to catch up with that and I still won so I feel pretty good about it yeah. um we've been sort of having a bit of a chat now like maybe our next game we will consider investing in the old um like using the 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 full deck because so far we've only been using yeah. the basic cards and uh, you and I have played a, a game with the advanced cards before yeah. it took a bit longer hmm. but it was good um, yeah it'd be interesting to give that another try I think it, it feels like you two are getting pretty confident with the base <laughs> game and really digging it come join us sometime I will when I'm not off gallivanting around gallivanting allowing, around allowing scientists to look at how my blood is doing bloody scientists Science. with their blood indeed finding out how my body do how your body do doing pretty it's good pretty. very vaccinated I'm so vaccinated it's about to be even more vaccinated I'm going to be pentuple vaccinated that's I'm going to be so vaccinated so many vaccines so many vaccines you can't mm. stop me too many vaccines <laughs> Unstoppably oh. vaccinated. Oh. Have you played anything else? Uh, we played another game of Pandemic. We did. We did. We played. Uh, we played we a game of Pandemic. Some, we taught a new person Pandemic. Indeed, it's an, always an easy one to to teach people. Yeah, we had a very good starting turn. We yeah, we managed to like clear one of the the diseases we, within the first turn, and within a couple of turns, we had uh, blue eradicated. Yep, which. Helped because it gave us some breathing room to, like, hey, make your choices. If you make mistakes or play suboptimally, we can still probably get through. And here's what um, these things mean. And yeah. here's what that does. And, like, we, we, we had, like, six or so um, epidemics pop up. Uh, not epidemics. Um, outbreaks. Outbreaks, yeah. So, like, we, you know, we were, we were going a little towards, like, oh, we've taken quite a lot of damage. and Well, I was doing the normal thing of, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Exactly. I'm just gonna, if if things go bad, things are going to go bad. I'm going to point out where where our, like our points of weakness are, but yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I I feel like it was a good teaching game in that because things kept going wrong, but we had some wiggle room. Yeah. It's like, yep, that's the consequence of leaving that how it is. Yep. We're not going to lose yet, but that is the consequence. Considering the start we had, we came very close to dying. Yes, and I think that like yeah, you 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 had some opportunities there to learn from yeah. how things go wrong. Yeah, I uh, hope we get to play again. And we had another game with with Fee because yeah. uh, I think we played with Fee once before. I believe so. Yeah, I've definitely played o o over the inter inter over internet. 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 Yeah. It's in, you know. Uh, <laughs> what about you? Have you played anything else? Uh, the main thing I've been playing a bit more of is Death's Door. Which is a little isometric, sort of, um, a little bit of a Dark Soulsy kind of game. A little less brutal, a little mm. less, like, uh, you, you're dropping your experience and stuff when you die. But you play as a little crow with a sword. Aww. You, you're a little you're a little crow going and going and collecting souls and, and whatnot. Crow you, souls. Yeah, you got, you got a little dodge roll, you got a sword, and that's... You, you got a bow and arrow with a very limited number of arrows, and that's <laughs> basically it. Go... Make your way across the world and fight some bosses and stuff. Yeah. Uh, feels very good. It's very responsive. It's not needlessly brutal. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a little tricky, but it's um it it because of the fact that there are so few interactions, it's basically just move, dodge, hit, or bow. Mm -hmm. Um it just expects you to get very good with those four things. Mm. Uh largely, at least, you know, you get some other weapons later and stuff, but it's it's largely dependent on this is your very limited move set, do it right, and it feels really good. Mm -hmm. um, love a lot of the character designs, the boss designs, music superb. Mm -hmm. um, really nice level of opening, backtracking routes that sort of open, like because of the zoomed out isometric perspective, it's easy to see how things connect with each other. Mm. And when you open a shortcut, go. I logically knew that I was nearly here, and I could sort of see how it connected up. And yeah. oh, it's really nice. And it's it's not super wide reaching, but you you do feel satisfied when you get those unlocked. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's a really nice little game. I am really digging it. Nice. Uh, have you played anything else this week? Like one other thing. <gasps> what was your other I've thing? not played since like, October two thousand and fourteen. <laughs> Thanks, Dean, for shaming me. I played some paranormal activity. Oh, tell us Do you about remember that. Remember this one? 
Um, I I don't. The name's really familiar, and I can't place it. Do you remember Steam Greenlight? <laughs> Oh god, yeah. They wouldn't let it on Steam Greenlight. Oh. And there was a big campaign by a bunch of people to try and get it up onto onto Steam and eventually they let it go on Greenlight and eventually it got on Steam and then no one played it. Yeah. <laughs> um I originally owned it on Desura. Oh god. <laughs> um yeah, it's a uh voxel-based first-person arena shooter. Yeah, where you're like the bosses include like a giant whale or a huge jellyfish, mm. and there's like demon things and land sharks that sort of they've got glowing eyes and they slither through the floor. Yeah, and there's these weird little monk things that shoot fireballs at you, and you collect money, and it seems to be uh, procedurally generated. And yeah, depending on what floor you're on, you'll get like more dangerous enemies and there's little shops and stuff and decent procedural generation or like yeah this feels a little un uncrafted kind um i mean it's it's pretty basic like you there are a pool of rooms and it will go i'll put this room to the north of that uh, pool it and it's just another small arena <laughs> and mm. sometimes it will have a boss in it and sometimes it will be the shop and sometimes it will be a shop, uh, a room where you can get your choice of guns. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's fun, fast-paced, frantic, and um, it's got a really kicking drum and bass soundtrack. Oh, nice. Like, what if chip tune but drum and bass? I mean, that's that's not a bad. Yeah, it's not good. bad. Yeah, it was fun, pretty banger. Um, yeah, and and I don't know why I hadn't played it for seven years, but there we go. Oh, it's, it's all right. I, I'm glad it's held up all right. Yeah. Well, well, is that everything? I think that's about it for me. Well, then. <gasps> Time for this. Yes. Ooh. Who's that? Ooh. Making bloody noise. I'm trying to sleep. I am a ghost. I know you. I'm sure I've met you before somewhere. Have I met you before? You have. I'm the ghost of someone who has been failed by the benefit system. So I see you're up and moving around, though. I'm literally dead. But you, you know, you could probably be taking phone calls or something. I cannot hold a phone. I, I, I'm putting my hand through your face oh, right get now. Get off me. Don't touch me. I'll call security. I'll put my hand through the wall, then. Look. I'm incorporeal. I died from lack of support from the government. Which well, sounds like you don't need support. You could be getting up and doing work. There's no excuse. I d we're definitely cutting you off now if we haven't already. You did already. And now, if you don't change your ways and improve the benefit system, I'm just going to sort of make it very difficult for you to ever get a good night's sleep. I'm made of ghosts. You can't get rid of me. Ooh. And I suppose you think that I'm just going to, you know, what, 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 sign you back on or approve, approve everyone's benefits? Yes. Otherwise, I will literally follow you around forever telling you how you killed people. People have died because of you. It's going to make it really hard for you to have dates if there's a ghost following you around telling people that you're a murderer. It's all right. I just date a Tory. Oh. Ooh. Boris! <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, boss, I've, I've got... I've had a weird order come in. How weird? Uh, well, I'm looking at the computer and, you know, there's like, you know, they got the, the, the vegan chicken pizza there and the yeah. uh, that one. That... We it's, do those now. Yeah, yeah, like, this is the one that's, like, confusing me, though. Yeah. They've ordered it with no cheese. Well, maybe they clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> Yeah, but like we put that button in the app recently. That if you, uh, we don't do it for anything else. But if we, if they click no cheese, we put up the big button and it says, "Are you sure you don't want cheese?" And if they say yes, I'm sure I don't want cheese. We have the other menu that comes up that goes, "Are you, are you really sure that you don't want cheese?" And yeah, yeah, and yeah, that doesn't it? Ninety six yeah. more times. Yeah, so like they must have kept clicking the "I don't want cheese" button. Well, maybe they accidentally clicked the "I don't want cheese" nice eight times. I mean, maybe I, I. I can't imagine they don't want cheese. Why, Why would they, they want... not want cheese? It's, it's a pizza, pizza right? They want cheese. Yeah. 
just make it with look, just just make it with cheese. It's probably a glitch in We're the system. We're all gonna make something. it with cheese. Yeah, we'll get we'll get it sent out. We'll it'll be fine. Okay, now this thing where they said they wanted barbecue sauce. I mean, that just seems like effort. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, order's up. Okay, they've already called back. They don't... They, they're they unhappy there's cheese on it. Why would they be unhappy? It's a pizza. Pizza makes everyone happy. Yeah, like, I don't know how to explain that one. They called up and said, you put cheese on my pizza. Don't... Tell them they're wrong. You're wrong. So, <gasps> what have you put in your eyes? Uh, I've not put a huge amount in my eyes this uh, this week. No. Uh, I did watch some of the new season of Game Changer mm. on Dropout. Oh, heck. Um, there have been some good ones. Uh, there was a new round of one of their recurring games that's happened a few times of mm. um, m- try and make this sound, which has been a fun one when it's happened okay. before. Um, I'm trying to think what ones there have been um, this season that were good. Um... I know one of the guys from the the sound episode, uh, or the previous sound right, episodes. Um, they did a skit of his on TikTok because Dropout have a TikTok. Hmm. Um, and it, the thing was uh, the largest, the largest businessman. <laughs> oh yes, yes. The world's largest businessman, oh. miming mm. like flipping over a yeah. tiny little flip chart. <laughs> Oh, yes. I remember one of the really good ones that, that I wish had been much longer because mm. like, I could have watched it all day. It was called uh, I Like My Coffee. Mm. And it was a bunch of pun setups thrown in front of players and each of them had to compete for the best punchline to right. the... Uh, like, what's what's your punchline to this... You know, pr- the, the sort of ro- romance I like my coffee pun mm-hmm, set up mm-hmm. that um, it was very good <laughs> I recommend that one very highly nice um, yeah what about you what have you been watching oh uh, not a lot TikTok been watching a decent amount of TikTok it's, it's like wait and I don't have to think about it and it doesn't make me sad woo Big which is move. really a wicked want right now I watched uh, the Defunct Land documentary about the Disney Fast Pass oh yes um, fascinating Defunct Land I didn't think I was going to enjoy a documentary about a See, particular type of a, 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 a entry ticket. I didn't think I would until I no, like I saw that come up on my recommended multiple times and didn't click it until I realised it was Defunct Land. And then I was like, I mean, Defunct Land's never really <laughs> steered me wrong on interesting, weird documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like they like, there's a whole thing about a computer model for, hey, what if we just took like all this data we have that we've gathered from somewhere we're not telling you until later in the video and it is this theme park and this is how it works and this is how it would work with this ticket this ticket system and this ticket system and why each one is better or worse than the other and in which ways and who that negatively and positively affects yeah it's like i don't know i am very interested in all of these data points but it's quite cool it's <laughs> It's fascinating the big data behind things that like you don't really think much about. Defunct yeah. Land's got a real good storytelling way of yeah. getting and, those across. And Disney obviously being like horrible money grabbing capitalist bastards, so you know, they're obviously gonna have a lot of data about how can we fleece more of it out of people. Yeah. Ah, uh, so one thing that I continue really enjoying mm-hmm. and have been watching a few more of is one of the few IGN video series on YouTube that is consistently really good is developers reacting to speedruns of their own games. Yes. Um, there's a really nice one. It's very short. I don't want to spoil anything, mm-hmm. but Loop Hero yes. has a very short speedrun. How short? Sure? Um, I believe it's like under under fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's oh, it's it's real good. I hadn't considered how you could speedrun that. A game where you... It's like, yeah, you've got your fast-forward movements, people. It's like, surely you should... No, no, there's there's weird shit you can do with that game. Hmm. Um, yeah, I continue... I, I need to go back and check if there's any I've missed in that, that series, because every one of them I've watched has been really enjoyable. Yeah, I really enjoyed the Deathloop one. Yeah. Uh, um... uh, Super Liminal... They had a good one for Super Liminal. Oh, one. the Super Liminal one's good. I imagine that's pretty wild because I would expect you can break that in really interesting ways. Oh, indeed. 
there are several rooms where like there's several steps you should have to do to get the right perspective to do a thing mm. and they're just like nah you can just do it from here do it like this oh you're falling down grab that thing do the thing before you hit the ground dumb yeah pretty wild stuff yeah um they they do an amazing job with those those speeded runners um and sometimes very very quickly after the game came out because that um, Deathloop video was what a couple of weeks after release. Yeah, that's I mean, pretty good. I mean, within a week of <laughs> Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl coming out, there were half-hour speed runs happening. Yeah, but that's because that game is fundamentally broken, right? Uh, yes, a <laughs> little bit. Um, <sighs> that game's so broken. My favorite glitch from that is one glitch that you would have thought the Pokemon company would have caught, because it's a glitch that they have every few years and they keep forgetting, which is, if you can do something at the exact same frame that a trainer tries to start a battle, you can break Pokemon games. Gen 1 Pokemon, this was how you could glitch your way into encountering a Mew without a cheat cartridge. Right. Get a a Pokemon with teleport like uh, Abra uh, at the top of the Nugget Bridge. There was a trainer that you could step just into their view and press pause, get Abra to teleport and the trainer would try and start a battle as you were teleporting away right. and that would cause some weird data to get loaded into memory where it wasn't meant to and you could find Mew. Uh, memory um, fucks. But like there's an example of that in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl now. Um, I think it's been patched out now but at a launch day where you could surf on land because there was a trainer who could try and start a battle with you while you were instigating surfing. It's like it's such... Every NPC should really, you should go, okay, where, what spaces can a trainer be, a player be in? And th the fight tries to trigger. On those spaces, can they do anything that would break this? Wow. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to remember the one I was watching the other day. It was one of these, like, just amazing glitch discovered in very, very old game. Like, down to sub 30 seconds for this JRPG. But yeah. I cannot seem to find it in my... Uh, my uh, history at the moment. Mm. I've been watching lots of videos about pixel art because yeah. pixel art's fun. Pixel art is fun. Um, oh, we watched that Stud Studson Studio video of uh, building the Hal's <gasps> Moving Castle out of junk. Oh my god, that was amazing! It's a 52 minute video of just amazing building out of just so many bits of plastic and like foam and stuff just this amazingly beautiful version of house moving castle like there's various points in it where you're like oh that's pretty cool that's pretty cool and then he starts painting it and it's like fucking hell oh it yeah. looks so good um have you got anything else no i think that's it for me the other thing i've been uh watching day by day is um advent calendars 2021 with ashens and nerd cubes <gasps> oh yes they do this every year this year they have the very expensive um doctor who and star trek um Ooh. advent calendars the doctor who one is obviously tardis shaped the star trek one is borg cube shaped mm. um some of those things are better and some of them are worse <laughs> Oh, uh, I did watch one other thing. Ooh. I watched a YouTube video called Stranger Danger Films from the 90s Are Insane uh, by a YouTuber called Eddie Burback. Right. Uh, particularly focusing on um, a particular series of American Stranger Danger Films from the 90s about an alien whose entire purpose is to teach human children how to how to not get abducted by strangers. Right. Except this alien has zero sense of self-preservation. Right. Um, it's it's a movie. It is a time loop Groundhog Day style movie where like this alien will repeatedly be taught lessons about how to not get abducted, will ignore those lessons, get abducted, thankfully has like a little oh, I got a thing that'll zap me out and I'll be safe. Right. And then you sort of build through this time loop narrative to eventually, ah, oh, fuck, he forgot his little zapper thing. Uh -oh. Now he's got to actually not get abducted. It's it's wild. <sighs> it's a lot. Even on his final day of the loop, he makes some wild fucking choices. Mm -hmm. It's it's It was an interesting insight. Um, it sure was a thing. Y yeah. 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 I do remember, like, 80s... Like, public information feels being pretty fucking wild. But, uh, yeah, that I... sounds like they had a budget for that one. Yeah, yeah. I know the UK had some... 
like if the big one is the don't go into electrical stations UK. Don't go to substations. Kids. Yeah, don't go to Timmy! electrical. St- oh no, Timmy's been electrocuted to death. Oh no. Yep. Yeah, we we had adverts that were like, hey, don't fuck around with substations. You will literally die. Yeah, like the like, the the seventies and eighties really love their, and this will literally kill you. And we're going to show you a small child being. Like, horribly burnt electrocuted. Yeah, the UK was real in on scare tactics yep. for a bit. Yep, yep, yep. But, <sighs> like, I mean, if you watched that happen to someone, that would probably scare you yeah. too. So don't do it and encourage other people not to go and play yeah. on electricity substations. I've been watching a couple of Eddie Burback videos of, like, here are some... Co- com- commentary and compilations of weird old content. Yeah. Like, one of them I saw was about, um... 80s sex education films. Um, right. In particular, there was one that was sponsored by Tampax and um, ends with a musical number. Okay. Um, and people holding hands and dancing around in a circle. It's quite baffling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to show anything else? I don't think so. Well then, time for this. <laughs> Got a new sponsor. Who's our new sponsor? Oh, well, do you find the crushing weight of the world too much? I mean, that's a very existential dread for a spo- question for a sponsor to ask me. But yes, occasionally. Too much world on top of you, all getting you down, is it? A little bit, a little bit. The weight well, of the world really gets me down. Well, if the weight of the world is getting you down, try a weighted blanket. Oh, I can, I guess, be weighted down by the blanket. Match the weight of the world yeah. with the weight of the blanket. The weight of your depression with the weight of the blanket. Burying your head in the sand. Not anymore. Just to get under the blanket. Burying my body in the nice heavy blanket. Nice yeah, heavy blanket. I, I think I get it. Yeah. yeah. You oh. could get several, layer them up. I mean, that does actually sound really good. Good even pressure all over oh. for hours and hours and hours and hours. I mean, the world is a lot less bad when there's just even weight on ya, huh? Even weight, it makes things better. It's better than the uneven weight of the world. Mmm, that's just on your shoulders. This could be sort of like evenly distributed, evenly distributed across, distributed. across yeah, your whole front. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to really go for that. Well, head on down to weightedblankets.lol.net and get 50% off your first order, including shipping. And usually that's where they get you with weighted blankets because shipping, very, very yeah. heavy. Oh. This place, they'll do a good deal and give you 50% off if you enter the code QNPS something 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 some, 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 something something heavyweight. Well, I mean, if they're going to give me 50% off, I might as well order twice as many of them. I will never feel anything again. The blankets will protect me. Twice as many? Yeah! Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, NFTs. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, all the money right Love now, it. right? Money, money, Love money. Love the idea. Money, money, Plus, money, money. Plus, it's a good way for me to launder all that money. Well, exactly, exactly. Here's the problem. Here's one of the well, one of the problems. Yeah. Um, people are complaining about the environmental impact. Blah blah blah. Why is the environment getting hurt? Stop hurting the environment. So well, don't we have environmental artists for for stuff like that? Yeah, apparently, like they use energy as well to make their environments and whatnot. So, I'm trying to come up with some uh, ways we can. Do minimal cheap work to seem like we're offsetting the damage so we can still do NFTs. Oh, like when we say we're going to plant like a bajillion of the same tree in a like a mile square radius and everyone knows that's not how you uh, you build a healthy forest. Exactly. So like I've, I've, I've been working on something. I want to sure, see what you sure. think of it. So uh, I think... We install some. Uh, we we do an announcement, and we, I think I think we do it because like there is a reason to do it. Yeah. We we put we put uh, solar panels on the roofs of our buildings. Right. And like we you know we make a big deal about it, and we go like, hey, renewable energy. We're you know saving energy. We're doing good things with energy. Right. You know, not mentioning the fact that we're doing it because long term it's gonna be free money for us. Right. And we sort of bundle that in with the NFTs and we're like, oh, we're doing, you know, we're doing environmental energy. So we're green, greenwashing you know. NFTs now. Yeah, we're like, nice. uh, we're, we're, we're doing a carbon offset. We're being like, ah, yeah, we can have a 
we can do NFTs that are going to take the energy of a small country to power yeah. Yeah. because we're using like three rooms of our office are powered by the sun in the summer. I mean, that is almost the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I look, I think the headline will be solar panels installed by supremacy software to offset NFTs. Like that's so we're that. saving the world at that point. Oh yeah, exactly. Like I think that like you know if we like really play home the uh, the solar panels and go like you know why aren't other companies doing the solar panels? We can make it like we're the good guys and everyone forgets about the NFTs. You are a fucking genius. I know. So <gasps> what have you put in your ears? Well, I've put some uh, some some two thousands rock music in my. So ears. did I. Yeah, we were in a room when two thousands rock music happened. To be fair, I walked out of the room that you were in with a bunch of our friends. I was like, "This music's all right, but it's not quite doing it for me." I walked downstairs. I danced to some Papa Roach, and I came and got you all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, none of you regretted it. <laughs> it's it's a good time when you walk into a random staircase and like. My, my chemical, two different My Chemical Romance songs plays. So you're like, mm, yep, cool, good. We had some Fallout Boy. Yeah, we had some Panic at the Disco. Had uh, some uh, Mindless Self Indulgence. Was the jumpsuit? Oh no, it wasn't Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. I, I was trying. I was like, I knew it was someone of that era. It's Enter Shikari. It was Enter Shikari. Uh, sorry, you're not a winner by Enter Shikari. Where I was like, I know, I know this song because there's a certain point where it goes. It does a little three claps at a certain point, and I knew to come in with the claps, and I was like. I've seen this band line, I don't know who it is, but the clap, clap, clap is just burned into my head, apparently. Well, it was it was wild seeing a room full of people between the ages of, like, 20 and 50 just losing it to early 2000s rock. Oh, it was gosh, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was good. Um, <laughs> toward the end of the genre shifting away from rock, I did have a fun moment with a friend, though, who... Uh, it, it, the the rock was ending, and the the track "Smack My Bitch Up" came nice. on. Um, you know, a, a track that we all know. Yeah, it is what it is. A friend of mine had cl apparently never heard it, and looked and was like, "What? What, what are the lyrics what to this? The, song? What did that song say?" And I'm like, "Oh, sorry, the '90s were a were a time. They were a time. Oh, I yes. Oh, that was that was some, that was some good tunes." Yeah. I, it, that night did make me. I did go and listen to some Enter Shikari. I'm like, I wouldn't normally, but they scratched some weird itch in my head, and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna go back and listen to just like a few tracks. I'm not gonna give them any money, but I am gonna listen to I'll a few yeah, of their I'll tracks. I'll listen to a couple of tracks. Um, I found. I, I was trying to remember what the track was called, and I literally just googled rock song clap 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 mid two thousands. Um, there it was. was. It was the second video that came up. I was like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Uh clap 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 indeed. I mean it's it's a pretty iconic bit of a song just clap clap clap. Yeah. Um we listened to some bands. Um I can't remember the, any of the ones I really like the names of. Uh, uh there was a really cool drum and bass version of these boots are made for walking. Ooh. Um that I had some fun dancing with some friends too. Um and that's about all I can really I, remember, I'll be honest. Y usually when I go to this particular event, I will solo and like really focus on music. And this time was more... Had some friends. after all the people. Yeah, I didn't pay nearly as much attention to what I was listening to other than... Oh, this is alright. This is alright. This will do. Yeah. This will do for a bit. Dance, dance. Exactly. Um, but I did listen to a couple of new tracks this week. Mm -hmm. Let me find what I listened to. Tell us the tracks, tell I listened tracks. to a track called "Fuck Team Sports" by a band called Chewy. Mm -hmm. Um, a pretty fast-paced, upbeat rock track about not going along with something just because it seems to be the winning side. Mm. You know, avoiding that, just like oh, I'll just I'll just go over there where they're winning and like that'll be fine. Uh, I listened to a track called "Sailor in a Lifeboat" by Euringer. And Gerard Way, a track I had not heard, and I was trying to work out. I was like, "Why do I know this this other vocalist's um, <laughs> voice? Who is this Euringer?" And I was like, "Oh, I." It took me a second to work it out. It's uh, Jimmy Urin, Euringer. He's Jimmy Urin, the mindless self indulgence singer. Um, band that like, yeah, I'm not gonna stand by all of mindless self indulgence's songs, but. Their lead singer does have a good, interesting voice. It was a sort of... 
you know when sometimes you have like rock music that mixes in some sort of dance music y bits, like it contrasts sort of mm-hmm. um thing. A, a track like that with Gerard Way on some vocals, um, very upbeat and bouncy with a little bit of guitar lead in there. Mm. It, was a, it was a nice track. Um mm. and I listened to a track called You Spent All Your Love by Mega Mango. Um <laughs> Band band names are amazing. I'm constantly surprised by band names that exist, uh, which is a sort of femme slow rock track uh, that was it sort of went back and forth between like a little bit more intense rock and then some quiet gentle guitars in the the Ooh. the verses. Had a real sort of like road trip with a lover kind of vibe about learning to love as unashamedly do- as you do when you're young before you've had your heart broken a couple of times. That sort of letting your guard down kind of love. Oh, it was a nice track. What about you? You listen to anything else? Still trucking on through uh, the unabridged Lord of the Rings. How's that going? Uh, we are, I think Boromir's about to die. <gasps> oh no, not Boromir. Oh no, not Boromir. <laughs> He's muttering. He's muttering <laughs> in his boat. <laughs> and Gollum's following them on a log. If it was a better character, I'd be like, ah, oh, just pause it. They can't die if you if you pause it. I mean, it's Boromir. Let, Fast let... forward. Yeah. Get, 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 get to it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's everything I listened to. Well then, time for this. Oh, come in, come in. Oh. Well. So, um, I'm just going to get right into the interview questions. No, oh, good. Right. Don't waste so... my bloody time. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what do you believe is the best way to deal with people with drug addictions? Uh, burn them. Oh. Uh, m- migrants. Burn them. Drown them. Uh. Healthcare? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have another bypass, but no to you. Um, people. Or anyone else. People who disagree with you? Who? Oh, they can burn them, burn them. Uh, but drown them and then burn them. Those less fortunate? Uh, electrocute them, drown them, burn them. Um, what does empathy mean to you? Never matter. Okay, uh, let me check the uh, tick list. Congratulations, you are hired for the job of Tory MP. Yeah, I bloody am. Yeah, that's what Eaton was for. Hi, hi. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna find you someone nice today. Hopefully so. You know, I've been trying for a while, but hopefully we'll we'll find that special someone. I think we can find just the right someone for you today. So just got a few questions. Um, what is it you are looking for? Well, I'm I'm looking for you know I'm looking for someone loving, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fun to be with, yeah. generous, uh-huh. uh, not too high energy, mm-hmm. loves cuddles, yeah. enjoys their food. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Any, any any of that? Okay, yeah. so yeah, let's see. Uh, loving, uh, compassionate, companionable. Oh, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Uh, something generous, something, just little gifts now and again, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep, yep. Oh, I think here's the perfect one. <gasps> this is mittens. <gasps> oh. They're very fluffy. Oh. They're very fl- They're a bit older, and they've been struggling oh. to get ad- adopted, but they're very loving and very kind and considering. You will get little gifts in your shoes. <sighs> Sometimes on your bed. Yeah. But they're very lovely. I, they do seem very Love lovely. Mittens. I will just be very Here careful. Mittens. I'm going to be very careful to look in my shoes before I put them on now. Rub mittens. Okay, okay, I can't. This okay. is very, very, very good. <laughs> there, you've been adopted. Do you know what I want to see more of? What do you want to see more of? Virtual Justice Warriors. Virtual Justice Warriors. Yeah. yeah. All right, Barry. All right, Larry. How you doing? Oh, I'm also bad, mate. You, uh, you been up to much? Oh, you know, you know, I've been, uh, been doing some reading. Yeah, been, uh, yeah. Been, been researching some stuff about autism special interests. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a topic I find fascinating. I love, yeah, I love yeah, listening yeah. to people talk about the things that they, you know, like 
medically really really find interesting because you know the 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 enthusiasm's infectious a little bit oh, you know? yeah definitely you know I, yeah. I, 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 I do like hearing people infuse about stuff exactly so, you know. like, i don't have to care about the thing to be like you clearly care and i want to hear you care because that's great to hear it's nice to hear people who are not completely broken by the world who you know still have some real yeah. joy about you know uh, specific things yeah exactly and but, some you, you very yeah. often learn like an interesting tidbit that you never know well, exactly you know share yourself so those are the people that know like the interesting weird niche facts that are like oh that's actually interesting and not just like the, you know the surface level stuff. oh yeah but like i was having to think about something uh something the other day that i think so a little, a little interesting there's a lot of things that i think are probably autism special interests in many cases that don't get considered as such right like yeah. for a few reasons like so there's a few categories of things that like people don't seem to uh don't seem to register so like well, okay the first broad category is uh if it's not about numbers or mechanisms or like statistics if it's not something in that category it's it's often just like you know the exact same level of obsessive uh you know calming interest not seen as a autism special interest yeah then you got stuff like uh is it not seen as useful or intelligent like yeah uh, again now there's a bit of overlap there but like it only seems to get seen as an autism special interest if it's like oh yeah you uh you know about something that's useful or there's an application for what you know you like know? steam trains yeah exactly it's a thing where someone can point in and go oh yeah you could do that as a job or oh you are very clearly very good at that that's really cool um but like the big one i was thinking about is gendered interests because like you know how for years there's been a problem of like not women not getting diagnosed on the autism spectrum oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, one of the things that i think is really interesting about that is the overlooking of uh, autistic women's uh gendered special interests because there's a lot of things that like I think it's very clear a lot of autistic women gravitate towards that don't that just get written off as ah oh, that's just a girl thing. Right. Um uh obsessive level interest in boy bands is one that sometimes comes up. Like yeah. sort of like encyclopedic knowledge of boy bands sometimes is one. Um fan fiction is a big one. A lot of very obsessive special interest level fan fiction, uh, fan fiction aficionados. You know, I didn't realise fan fiction was, you know, generally a gendered thing. Uh, uh, weirdly it is um yeah. it is something that like produ like very 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 much skews towards women read fan fiction men generally don't i always a, assumed that fan fiction that was largely written by women was probably because they were sick of reading how women were written most other types of media well i mean that is 100 percent part of it but also like a big part of it is that a lot of women who will, you know, get a special interest in... Let's let's say some women, uh, you know, you've got an autistic woman whose uh, special interest is like something like the TV show Supernatural. Right. And yeah. it's like... A lot of that. Yeah, a lot of that. There's not a lot of, like, supporting material to go look at outside of it because it's like, oh, it's a thing for girls. And that's why the fan fiction community pops up right. and they sort of gravitate yeah, yeah, there because it's yeah. like, aha, more things I can engage with on my special interest. Uh, yeah. But, like, great one I heard from men was football. It's oh, not yeah. a special interest if it's football because people are just go, oh yeah, it's the thing that men like. Yeah, and there's people that have like encyclopedic knowledges of who oh. scored what goal yeah. against who in what match in what year. Exactly. You know and... what what kind of flags they ever yeah. wear on the pitch. And, and I'm, I'm certainly not saying that every person like that is autistic, but I think there are certainly autistic people. Yeah, but there are people yeah. who know football, and there are people who know yeah. football. And there are certainly some autistic people who you know have gravitated towards say football who it, that doesn't get picked up as a thing because it's you know ah oh, you're interested in the man thing yeah, you know? yeah. and like if I, anything you're just seen as one of the leads at that point exactly and again like you know i i think that there is something to do with special interests don't get seen as special interests if they are seen as valuable and interesting to the people around you yeah like yeah you know uh I've known people who like you know when pokemon was getting popular were like oh yeah special interest in pokemon when it's cool everyone sees that as just your you know a lot about the cool thing yeah, yeah but yeah. like we flag stuff like uh you know interest in uh you know steam engines as stamp a special collecting. yeah stamp collected as a special interest because most people around that autistic person probably don't share that interest and therefore it gets flagged as abnormal there's a lot of people for whom their special interest is a thing that is seen as societally acceptable and therefore it's not registered as the thing it is 
That is a fascinating thought, mate. Yeah, and I'm not saying there's anything to be done about it. It's just an no, intri- no, no, no. It's, it's just an just... observation I, I, yeah. I'm aware of, and I think like I feel like it particularly probably impacts women because I think yeah. there's a lot of like there's a lot of not perceiving things that women on the autism spectrum might have a special interest in as being a special interest. Yeah, thinking about it, I have known a few women in my life who had like encyclopedic knowledges of of like baking techniques going back like hundreds of thousands of yeah. years. Like, oh yeah, I know like Neolithic like cooking things and and how like v- like recipes that have been found in in yeah. like pyramids and stuff. And here's the thing: I think a lot of men will write that off as. Um, I know nothing about that, but that's not because it's a weird, like an unusual thing for you to know about. It's just because you know about it because you're a woman, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than being like actually that is quite an encyclopedic knowledge of a very niche subject. And you know, there's a lot of overlooking of you know. It, I don't know. It's, it's one it's in- thing knowing your granny's recipe for you yeah. know, Christmas cake is quite another thing to go. Oh yeah, you know, I can tell you what the literally the first recipe we know to have ever been written down anywhere. Exactly. Kind of thing is and- yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, it's a passing thought. I want to do some more reading about it because oh, I, you know, I occasionally you sharing yeah, occasionally see a thing and I go, yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, as I say, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy a hug? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. nice. Ah, good hug, mate. Good hug. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Right, I think I'm going to go and have a bit of a lie down. Yeah, might do the same. So, <gasps> we've got a book. We do have a book. We've got a book. It's called Who Wants the Whale? It is called it's, Who Wants the Whale. It's, it's a satirical, humorous book about the video game industry being shit. What? Yeah, video game industry is kind of shit, but we can have a laugh while talking about that. And some of the people are lovely. Some of the people are lovely. There are some There are some very lovely characters in there. There's also some characters that I viscerally hate. Just, but I mean, that's like, how I read them. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love how much I hate them, and I love how much I love the ones I love. They're very good. I like this book very much. It's called Who Wants the Whale? It is. You can support it with crowdfunding it. It's on Unbound. You can pre-order a copy. Unbound.com forward slash books forward slash whale. Or search Who Hunts the Whale Unbound in your search engine. You'll find it. Go go get a copy so we can put it out and you can read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can read through the whole book and try and work out... What companies or games we were thinking of when we named certain things? None of them. Everything is 100% fictional. Absolutely. But. (laughs) Nothing's inspired by anything ever. It's all coincidence. If it seems like it's based on a thing, it's coincidence. Yeah, it it genuinely is. But also, you know, enjoy some of the puns. There are some good puns. Puns, 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 puns. Oh, I like a good pun. Can't spoil the puns. Can't spoil the puns. But well, you could get a copy and then you'd you'd learn all about the puns. Yeah, get a copy, learn about the puns. We're at nearly seventy percent. In yeah. fact, we might be at seventy percent by the time this gets. Yeah, we're we're. So we're, this we're... is this is your chancings to get a copy. Oh, do get it. A copy, get a copy. <gasps> Help us hit a hundred percent spent, please. Please, that would be very nice. Yeah. If you don't mind, that would be lovely. Thank you. Maybe get a copy for, for a level. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. If, if you want signed copies of my other books I've done with Unbound, you can get a little bundle that does all of the Unbound books I've been involved in. The Laura K. Or, bibliography. Yeah, you can get them all signed, get them, yeah. get them done. Yeah. 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 You can get a swag bag. Oh, yeah, that swag bag is good. Fucking love that swag get, bag. Get some Supremacy Software branded merchandise. Mm. Get a Supremacy Software mug, t-shirt, uh, tote bag, mm-hmm. all sorts of branded. Definitely not tap. Do it. <laughs> uh, oh. where, 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 where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Laura K. Buzz pretty much everywhere. Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Patreon. That's the one that pays the bills. I'm on TikTok. Uh, every Friday I do episodes of Access Ability. Go watch this week's one when it goes up. It's about shiny hunting and neurodiversity, and I'm real proud of this one. Oh. I really, really like this one. And you can see the big ditto. It's so big, maybe it maybe it knocks over my lighting <laughs> while I'm trying to show it off on camera. Spoilers. A little bit. It's good though. Go go check out the go check out the video and the big ditto. Um that that's that's the main thing. What about you? Where are you at? 
Um, patreon.com slash stonedmonkeyradio. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help me justify a 76-hour work week. You can join the 21 other people who support me and help me hit that number, that lucky number 25. That would be great. Um, although, obviously, I realise it is the end of the year and a lot of people are finding money a little bit hard to come by. But nonetheless, I very much appreciate all of the good people who do support me and I will uh, remember to get a list up with everyone's <laughs> names on it next month. <laughs> or possibly before I air this episode, I will just paste it in <gasps> now. That happened or it didn't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't edit it, so I, I, I won't know at all. It's all my fault now. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, streamerlinks.com slash janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube and uh, twitch.tv on Thursdays. Uh, yeah, I'm all over, all over the place. Uh, Laura, yeah. will you please sing us out, darling? Until next time, be a stranger.